uh, at the presidential palace. The two leaders will sit down for bilateral meeting, where after there would be exchange of agreements and understandings uh, after the discussions between the two leaders. This will be the fifth meeting of the two leaders in the last eight months. It gives you a sense of intensity of high-level political exchanges between India and the UAE. Uh, their most recent meeting was in January uh, uh, this year on the sidelines of vibrant Gujarat summit. On 13th itself, Prime Minister will be addressing a community event, Alhan Modi, in Abu Dhabi to further strengthen our deep connect with our diaspora uh, family in the UAE. Uh, as you know, there is roughly 3.5 million strong Indian community in the UAE. Uh, on 14th, on the invitation of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister and Defence Minister of UAE and ruler of Dubai, Prime Minister will be participating in the World Government Summit 2024 as a guest of honour and deliver a special keynote address on the closing day of the summit. Uh, you would recall that previously Prime Minister had participated in the World Government Summit in 2018. A key highlight of the Prime Minister's visit to the UAE would be inauguration of the BAPS Hindu Mandir in Abu Dhabi on 14th February. Uh, you would also log recall that Prime Minister had laid the foundation stone of the temple in 2018 during his visit to the UAE. In terms of uh, substance, as we all know, India and UAE enjoy warm, close and multifaceted relations uh, underpinned by strong political, cultural and economic linkages and, of course, driven by the vision and personal guidance of the leadership of the two countries. Uh, following the landmark visit of Prime Minister to UAE in 2015, the bilateral relations between India and the UAE have undergone complete transformation. Uh, the relationship was elevated to comprehensive strategic partnership level in 2017. If I could just highlight a uh, few of the key uh, important elements of the uh, substantive uh, transformation in our exchanges. Uh, last year, as you know, was a highly successful here in our exchanges, intense high-level political exchanges. I have already referred to them earlier. Prime Minister visited UAE twice in 2023, in July and in December, first to participate in the COP World uh, Climate Action Summit. Two transformative agreements like trade settlements in local currencies. Uh, MOUs in several areas, including renewables, health care, logistics, and food parks. We have also opened up new areas of partnership between the two countries in the field of food security, education, fintech, defense, and security. We have also consolidated the India-UAE trade relationship. Uh, following the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with the UAE, India, uh, UAE has now become India's second largest export destination and the third largest trading partner. Our bilateral trade currently stands at roughly $85 billion. Uh, UAE has also become the fourth largest FDI investor in India last year. The visit of the Honourable Prime Minister to the UAE this time and the substantive agreements and understandings that are under discussions and negotiations between the two sides would allow the two leaders to inject further momentum across the whole range of areas that we cooperate in. The visit will also afford the opportunity to engage with the other global leaders who might be present in the sidelines of the World Government Summit. From UAE, after completing his visit on 14th of February there, 
Honorable Prime Minister will travel to Doha, Qatar on 14th February afternoon. During the visit, Prime Minister will hold bilateral meetings with the Amir of Qatar, His Highness Amir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani and other high dignitaries in Qatar. You would recall the Prime Minister had last visited Qatar in June 2016. As such, this will be Prime Minister's second visit to Qatar. There have been several high-level exchanges between in India and Qatar uh, in recent years. You would recall the visit of Honorable Vice President uh, to Doha in November 2022, as also the visit of the then Vice President Shri N. Venkaiya Naiduji in June 2022. Excellent Affairs Minister has also undertaken multiple visits to Qatar in the last three, four years. The bilateral relationship between India and Qatar that has been steadily growing includes a comprehensive span, including political ties, trade and investment linkages, a strong energy partnership, and ties in the field of culture, education, and security. You would be aware, uh, following the uh, recently concluded India Energy Week, Qatar Energy and Petronet LNG Limited had signed an agreement for the supply of 7.5 MMTPA LNG from Qatar to India for 20 years, starting 2028. Strong bilateral trade between India and Qatar currently stands at roughly $20 billion, and Qatar is also a significant investor in India across the whole range of economies. Strong diaspora is equally important connect between India and Qatar. Roughly 840,000 strong, vibrant Indian community resides in Qatar. Prime Minister's visit to Qatar will provide an opportunity for the top leadership of the two countries to discuss ways to further deepen and strengthen our multifaceted partnership, as well as exchange views on different regional and international issues of mutual importance. Honorable Prime Minister will return from his two-nation visit to Delhi back on 15th of February. I would stop here and take questions that might be there. Can we start from here? Yeshi? Uh, this is Yeshi Seli from the New Indian Express. So, so the PM is going to Qatar, as you just mentioned. One of the eight naval veterans is still in Qatar. Is he likely to come back soon? And uh, uh, what led to their uh, sudden uh, return to India, if you could throw light on that? Sridhar? Sir, um, Sridhar from the Asian Age. Um, so I wanted to know, um, I, uh, you know, it's, uh, the PM is of course going to Qatar. Uh, you issued a statement that the Amir had uh, ordered the release, but is it uh, equal to a royal pardon uh, that the uh, uh, Amir gave? And also, um, um, could you um, highlight, I mean, could you speak about this uh, personal intervention by PM Modi? Because when, they, when the two leaders spoke in December in Abu Dhabi, uh, sorry, in Dubai, um, you did not uh, reveal much details of uh, what ha transpired in that conversation. So if we could ha get some, because we've had union ministers thanking the PM for uh, his intervention. And also the, the sequence of events in for the UAE visit. So is it going to be the, the bilateral talks first and then the temple inauguration followed by the conference? Can you just uh, clarify the sequence of uh, the UAE visit, sir? 13th and 14th. So first it will be the bilateral talks. So what, what is the sequence of the... Uh, thanks. Smita. Smita Sharma, I work independently. Um, regarding the UAE visit, keeping in mind the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict and the differing positions, what does India see as the future for, uh, you know, the current status for ITU2? Where is that headed to? And IMEC as well. Hi, Megha from NewsX. My first question is, uh, the Prime Minister visiting Qatar and meeting the Emir is uh, 
the release of the eight veterans, the reason the Prime Minister is visiting there. Second of all, uh, is there a likelihood of any informal talks or bilateral talks between the Prime Minister and Amir uh, during the World Government Summit that takes place in, in Dubai? Huma? Sir, I'm Huma Siddiqui from the Financial Express. Uh, you mentioned some agreements expected to be signed. Would you be able to uh, I'd share which areas, which sectors the agreements? Uma Shankar, here. Uma Shankar, NDTV. Se. जितने भी सात भारतीय आए हैं उन सबों ने कहा है कि पीएम के पोस्टल इंटरवेंशन के बिना ये संभव नहीं था मेरा सवाल यही है कि किस तरह से ये पोस्टल इंटरवेंशन किया गया और उसके डिटेल से अगर आप बता सकें विल कम बैक फॉर मोर क्वेश्चंस लेट मी टेक Huma's question first with regard to the uh, agreements, uh, MOUs that are uh, likely to be exchanged, uh, signed during the visit. Uh, currently, the two sides are busy uh, discussing, as I said, various understandings and agreements uh, that the two sides could finalize, sign, and exchange during the visit. Uh, while at this stage, I am not in a position to share with you specifically the list of those documents, but broadly speaking, in terms of uh, the areas of uh, importance and continuing to build on what the two sides have signed in the past few years, these would include understandings on uh, in the field of energy, both relating to energy security and energy trade. Uh, there would be uh, some understandings and documents in the larger sector uh, of the ports, maritime, and logistics. Uh, since digital uh, cooperation between our two economies is an important element of a partnership, we are also looking to see if we can arrive at an understanding on investments in the field of digital infrastructure, uh, arrangements for the protection and promotion of capital flows between our two economies has become a very significant feature of our relationship in the last 10 years. Uh, this is something which also uh, is uh, under discussion and is a part of focus. Um, maritime heritage, how the two sides can cooperate in that field, is also an, uh, is a very important area of ongoing discussions. Uh, and also the uh, fintech connectivity, both relating to how uh, the two sides can cooperate on fintech platforms, uh, but also on fintech products, which is different, which which could which is different from platforms per se. Railways and related infrastructure areas of cooperation, and port infrastructure that I've already touched upon. Uh, these are some of the areas in which the uh, the two delegations are currently engaged in discussions to see what kind of specific understandings uh, could be finalized and agreed upon. We'll keep you briefed as we progress uh, into the visit uh, and the uh, specific uh, uh, documents that get signed. Um, uh, Sridhar, in terms of the sequence of the of the thing, uh, currently, the way the program is structured, and of course these you know evolve as you go along, that uh, 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 the bilateral meetings and visits will be on the 13th, whereas the uh, uh, temple inauguration is is on the next day, essentially. Uh, on the set of questions uh, relating to the release of. Indian nationals in case of Al Dahra case. Uh, uh, whatever we wanted to say, we have said it in the morning. We are uh, grateful for their return. We are gratified on their return. Uh, we deeply appreciate uh, the. Uh,
decision of the Qatari's government and the Amir to release them. Uh, we are happy to have uh, seven of those Indian nationals back. Uh, eighth international has also been uh, released and we continue to work with the Qatar government to see how quickly his return to India would be possible. Uh, as we have said already in our statement in the morning, uh, 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 and people have articulated also, Honorable Prime Minister has himself personally constantly supervised all the developments in this case uh, and has uh, never shied away from any initiatives that would ensure the return of uh, um, Indian nationals uh, back to home. Uh, we can uh, talk of different frames and terminology, like Sridhar you mentioned, whether it's a release or a pardon, etc. But I think we should see the facts for what they are. Seven of the eight Indian nationals of Aldhara case are back, back in India, back to their homes. As I said, we are extremely gratified about it and appreciate deeply the gesture of the Emir of Qatar for the release and uh, continue to work on the on the return of the 8th Indian National. Uh, Smita, to your question with regard to uh, impact of the ongoing Israel-Palestine conflict on the I2U2 and IMAC, uh, uh, no doubt uh, uh, the developments relating to the conflict in Gaza are always an important part of conversations whenever the leaders meet, but irrespective of that, the uh, the institutional engagement and the specific projects uh, that the two countries uh, and the uh, in case of IMAC set of uh, uh, other countries involved and in case of I2U to the other partners uh, the agenda of partnership agenda of cooperation that has been outlined in these two uh, in these two uh, mechanisms is proceeding well uh, the different sides uh, involved in this are continuing to hold regular discussions to make progress. And we are expecting, uh, I, I mentioned the general category of ports, maritimes, and logistics as one of the areas of cooperation. Uh, uh, a lot of this, uh, you would appreciate, also deals with the, um, uh, the, the infrastructure segments which fall under the IMAC uh, uh, corridor. Uh, with regard to, I think, from the news X, the question was on the informal talks between the Amir and, uh, and, and, and the leadership. Look, we have already mentioned about Honorable Prime Minister's uh, visit to Qatar after conclusion of his visit to UAE. Uh, the sideline visits on the, on, the, uh, on the sidelines of the World Government Summit will keep you briefed as and when they, they, they continue to uh, come up uh, on radar and uh, specific meetings are held. Uh, जो मैंने पहले टिप्पणी की उसमें नेत है कि प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी व्यक्तिगत रूप से इस विषय का जो लेके सुपरविजन करते रहे हैं और उनके सशक्त नेतृत्व का प्रमाण ही है ये एक प्रकार से और संबंधों की सशक्तता को भी दर्शाता है कि आठ भारतीय नागरिकों में से दालदारा केस के सात नागरिक इस समय अपनी भारत भ� Look, the visits uh, of the Prime Minister, any visits, uh, not just this visit, but all visits are uh, planned and scheduled, uh, and the discussions on that scheduling starts months in advance. Uh, and we announce those visits and in, as and when those schedulings get completed. So we'll take more questions. Uh, Please, yeah. Same question. Each here. Yeah. Kalol and. Uh, sir, this is Kalol from the Hindu. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the fate of the um, Indian prisoners, uh, especially in uh, United Arab Emirates and Qatar, because the UAE, where the Prime Minister is headed, currently holds at least uh, 2,100 Indian prisoners in its jails. And Qatar alone holds around the 752 Indian prisoners, apart from the eight uh, who have been released. So I want to ask, uh, is the government going to raise the issue of these prisoners at some point during these uh, visits? 
And also, uh, you know, most of these prisoners are from very, uh, you know, underprivileged background. That. Uh, laborers and people accused of petty crimes who don't get enough uh, legal assistance. So would the government also consider supporting them in some way so that they could also come back home? Look at the lady there, yeah, please. Hi sir, I'm Amiti Sen from Hindu Business Line. Uh, so this dollar uh, two billion of investments promised by uh, um, UAE in the uh, food parks uh, under the I2U2, Sir, uh, will that also be a topic of discussion and what is the status of that? You can go to Sudhi here. Sir, uh, Sudhi Ranjit from the Bloomberg, sir. On the Qatar case, if you could give us an understanding, who, I mean, we understand that this would have been a pardon from the MA, who then moved the, you know, mercy petitions? Was it Government of India or the veterans themselves? So we have one more here. Sahil. Sir, I'm Sahil from ANI. Uh, regarding this uh, big diplomatic victory, how did India manage it and how did they process it? Uh, listen, in so far as all the questions relating to Qatar and the return of seven of the eight Indian nationals who are back in India are concerned, I think we've already answered, issued a statement, whatever is to be said on that has been said and I would not have anything further to add. Uh, Kalol, to your question with regard to the number of Indian prisoners in the UAE uh, and in Qatar, indeed in other countries, not just these two countries, a government of India has extensive mechanisms in place of consular dialogues and discussions involving the Indian uh, system and the systems in those countries who are, uh, whose one of the principal tasks is to keep working towards the early release of all the Indian prisoners, uh, irrespective of which country they are. Uh, there are also very established mechanisms and systems in place uh, which ensure that whatever assistance, wherever possible, is to be made available to these prisoners, is made available through the government mechanisms. These are the systems which uh, have been strengthened enormously, uh, whose remit has been expanded uh, extensively, where uh, strong support by the government is embedded in them. These have been put in place, particularly over the last ten years, under the Prime Minister of uh, under the Prime Ministership of uh, Honourable Prime Minister Modi. Uh, this applies very much, uh, as I said. Um, uh, to the current two countries also where Honorable Prime Minister is visiting uh, and there are established dialogue mechanisms which, which take up that. Uh, I don't want to prejudge the discussions that would take place at the leadership level but I want to mention to you that uh, uh, this is something which is very regularly and extensively taken up on the system-wide basis by the Government of India. Uh, to the question from the Hindu business line on the $2 billion investments on the food park, uh, as I mentioned to you in response to one of the earlier questions, uh, all projects that have been identified under I2U2 and food park project uh, predates, uh, you know, even the I2U2, those discussions are continuing between the relevant uh, stakeholders. Uh, on the UAE side as also on the Indian side because some of these uh, uh, parties on the Indian side and the UAE side are private sector parties. So the project and the discussions under those projects uh, continue to be held between the two sides. Anything else? Well, you had asked. Go again. Sir, uh, one last question we have from Madhu here. Sir Madhurendra, my news nation say, just like the Prime Minister of Abu Dhabi is going to the Pabs Temple for the Udghatan. I would like to know what will be the purpose of this whole character, especially when the Prime Minister will be there, when the Pabs Temple will be there, what will be the purpose of the Pabs Temple? And what will be the purpose of the Pabs Temple? Sir, I would like to know what will be the purpose of the Pabs Temple? Sir, I would like to know what will be the purpose of the Pabs Temple? वो प्रधानमंत्री जी के आ, आ, यूएई यात्रा का एक 
प्रमुख अंग है उसकी विस्तृत जानकारी जो इनाग्रेशन से पहले है उसकी क्या रूपरेखा होगी वहाँ पे कितने लोग उपस्थित होंगे अभी तक की जानकारी ये है कि लगभग 2000 से 5000 श्रद्धालुओं की उपस्थिति की अपेक्षा है वहाँ पर प्रोग्राम काफ़ी विस्तृत है उसकी जो प्रत्यक्ष रूप से रूपरेखा है उस रूपरेखा का समय सारणी क्या रहेगी उसके क्या भाग रहेंगे वो हम आपको इनाग्रेशन से यथापूर्वक और यथोचित समय पे सूचित अवश्य करेंगे देखिए मैंने आपसे कहा कि उस प्रोग्राम का जो स्वरूप है उसकी जो रूपरेखा है हम उसके बारे में आपको पूरी तरह से सूचित करेंगे well thank you there are no more questions we close this session thank you very much for your participation and look forward to our engagement i am sure some of you are traveling or your teams are traveling to uae we'll keep in touch thank you thank you for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon